So in today's video we're going to have a look at recurring decimals and writing them as fractions. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to kick start with this question. So it says write 0.47 with the recurring dot above the 7 as a fraction in its simplest form. Now when it comes to this we are going to use a bit of algebra to do so. Now the first thing we're always going to do is just write that x equals the decimal in the question 0.47 with the recurring dot. And it's important just to think about what's actually recurring here, and it's just the 7. If I was to write it out as an actual decimal, it'd be 0 0.4, and then I could just keep writing 7s forever. Okay, now when there's only a one recurring decimal, the thing that we can do here is if we can take this value of x, which is 0 0.47, we can just multiply that by 10. And depending on how many recurring decimals there are, will determine what we can, what we actually want to multiply it by. And you'll see the reason that we actually do this. So if we multiply it by ten, we would get four point seven, and then it'd be another seven as it's recurring. And I'm not going to write any more sevens. I'm just going to write the same amount of decimal places as I have in my one above there. Two decimal places in 0.47. So I'll keep two decimal places in this version here. Now the reason this can help us is now we can take these away from each other. And if we do take them away from each other, those seven, those recurring sevens are going to cancel out. So when I take them away, and I can seem a little bit odd doing this because I'm doing the bigger number on the bottom take away the smaller number on the top. So you can always feel free to realign it to the side, which I can do over here. I won't actually normally do this, but 4.77 take away 0.47. Okay, so I tend to do it just looking at it up, sort of upside down on the side, but you can actually just realign it. Look, the 7 take away the 7 makes 0. The 7 take away the 4 makes 3. And then 4 take away 0 is 4, so it's 4.3. So when we take these away from each other, 10x take away the 1x leaves us with 9x. And then our decimals, when we take them away, we get 4.3. And I'll, I won't write the 0 after that, I'm just going to write 4.3. Now there are other methods of doing this, this is just the way that I like to do it, I always just like to remember one recurring decimal, multiply it by 10 and then take them away from each other. But you end up with this scenario here, look where we have a decimal on the right hand side, we've got 4.3. Now I can't turn this into a fraction, or I could, but we shouldn't really have decimals in a fraction. So before I turn it into a fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So once we've multiplied both sides by 10, we get 90x and that equals 43. And now we can turn that into a fraction. We've got 90 in front of the x, so we can divide both sides by 90. And it's important to leave this in terms of algebra, because some of these questions will say prove. So I'm just going to keep it as x equals. So x equals 43 divided by 90, or over 90. There we go. Now we've almost finished. It does say give it in its simplest form. Now you've got to think, Do these? Uh, does this fraction actually simplify? Okay, so there are different ways of actually doing recurring decimals, and sometimes you might not get it in its simplest form. Now the way that I have done it does actually leave this fraction here in its simplest form. Okay, 43 over 90 doesn't simplify. It is worth just having a check though, just to you know, just try and apply some little tricks. Are they both even? Do they both divide by 2? Do they divide by 3 or 5? And keep just checking a few numbers that you know go into 90. Uh, and, but as, of, as the way I've done this particular question, it has actually finalised in its simplest form. Okay, so that one doesn't actually need simplifying, but just make sure you check in those final steps to see if it simplifies. But let's have a look at one more. Okay, so slightly different wording here. It says prove algebraically that 0.16 recurring can be written as 1 sixth. Now again, prove algebraically. Now the last one I actually did do algebraically as well. I always do it in that same format, but it might actually ask you to do it algebraically. And that means it's important to keep with those steps that I was doing before. But let's have a look and have a think about how this question uh, can be done as well. Now the same as before, I'm going to write x equals 0.16. 1, 6 recurring, and just remembering that is the 6's there that are recurring. Now again, just like the first one, there's only one recurring decimal, so I can actually uh, do this just by times it by 10 again. So we get 10x equals, and I'll have 1.6, and it's a recurring 6, so it's another 6, and again, I'm only going to write the amount of 6's to balance it out with the same amount of decimal places. Now that I've done that, when we take these away from each other, that recurring 6 is going to disappear will be cancelled out, but again you can do the working out to the side, so I can do 1.66 and I'm going to take away 0.16 and we do that, the two sixes cancel each other out, so that's 0, 6 take away 1 is 5 and then 1 take away 0 is 1, so it's 1.5 so if we write this down here, 10x take away the 1x gives us 9x and that equals 1.5 
Now again, we've got a decimal on the right hand side, and this might not always happen, but I've picked ones that are a little bit trickier when we've only got one recurring decimal. We just need to times both sides by 10 again, and that's gonna remove the decimal there. So times everything by 10, and we get 90x equals 15. Now we can turn it into a fraction. So divide both sides by 90, and this is where we need to make sure we leave it in terms of algebra. Look, we have to write x equals, otherwise we're not using algebra anymore, equals 15 over 90. And again, in the final step, it does say show that it equals 1 6. Now it depends how difficult the question is here. You can probably see that in order to get from 15 down to 1, we're gonna to have to divide by 15. So to simplify this, you've gotta divide by 15. You could take it in multiple steps if you can't spot that there. We could divide by five and then simplify it from there. Uh, but the easiest way to do this is just to divide by 15. So divide the top by 15 and show you working out here, show how you've simplified it. 15 divided by 15 is one and 90 divided by 15 is six. And there we go, there's our final answer there, one sixth, and we've shown that using algebra, and we've shown how we've simplified our fraction, and that little last step there is really important to make sure that you show how you've simplified it. Okay, so here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions, both with one recurring decimal, so both need multiplying by 10, but pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the answers for this. So for the first one, we've got x equals 0.27 recurring, times that by 10, and we get 2.77. When you take those away from each other, you get 9x equals 2.5. Timesing both sides by 10 gets you 90x equals 25. And then dividing by 90, you get x equals 25 over 90. And we just need to simplify that. Both sides divide by 5. 25 divided by 5, and make sure you show you're working out for this. So divide by 5. We get 5 on the top and you get 18 on the bottom, and there's your final answer, five over 18. And something that is quite nice is if you've got a calculator while you're practicing this, you can type in five divided by 18, and you'll see that you get the decimal 0 0.27 recurring, so it's a nice little check that you can do when you're practicing these. Over to the next one, we've got 0 0.23 recurring, and show that it can be written as seven over 30. So let's go for this, so we've got x equals 0.23, times in both sides by 10, we get 2.33, Take those away from each other, and you get 9x equals 2.1. Divide uh, Times both sides by 10, you get 90x equals 21. Write that as a fraction. We get x equals 21 over 90. And then have a look at what you can divide the top and bottom by. Now in this, it does say show that it can equal 7 over 30. And that gives you that nice little hint there. To get from 21 to 7, you're going to have to divide by 3. So you know you're going to divide by 3. So we get 7 on the top and 30 on the bottom. And there we go. And that's where you've got to make sure that you do show that what you've divided by there. Because that's how you're proving how you've got from 21 over 90 to 7 over 30. Let's have a look at something slightly different then. Okay, so this question says, prove algebraically that 0.27 can be written as 3 over 11 and the recurring is above the 2 and the 7. Now that means there's two recurring decimals in this question. There's a recurring pattern of 2s and 7s. When there's two dots there, the dots indicate the start and the end of the pattern. So in this case, it's a 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7 that's just going to keep on going. But we're going to follow the same approach. We have x equals 0.27. Now, if I was to times this by 10, and I'm going to get rid of this because it's not you're going to see it's not going to work. If I was to times it by 10, I'd get 2 point, and then it'd be 7, 2. And if I leave the same amount of decimals as above, look, you can see there that they don't line up. So times it by 10 in this case is not going to work. So instead, we're going to have to times it by 100. And that's just going to shift them along two places. So if we times it by 100, we get 27 point, and then it's 2, 7. And now these can actually be taken away from each other. Now again, I tend not to write the working out to the side, but 27.27 take away 0.27. You can see there's quite nice. It just leaves us with 27. We get zero, zero, seven take away zero is seven and two. So we get 27. So when we take these away from each other, it's quite nice. 100x take away one x is 99x and 27 on the right. Now that's quite nice, no decimals have appeared in this one, so we can turn that straight into a fraction. So x equals 27 over 99. And then again, we have that important step here of showing how we're gonna simplify it. So to get from 99 down to 11, which is what it wants us to get to in the question, three over 11, we're gonna to have to divide by nine. And we're gonna do the same to the top there. So 27 divided by nine is three, 
and 99 divided by 9 is 11 and it might be that you just have to show some division working out there and if we do get to a point where I think we need to actually show our working out I will do so but there we go there's our answer for that one let's have a look at one more Okay, so this question says, prove algebraically that 0.126 can be written as 14 over 111. Doesn't look the nicest of fractions there. But you can see in this one, look, we've got the different recurring pattern. It starts on the one and ends on the six, and that means it's a full pattern of 126 that's been, um, that's recurring there. Or if I was to write it out, it'd be 0.126 and then another 126, and it would just keep going like that with the one and the six recurring, the one, two and the six recurring. Okay, so just be careful. It's not the, just the one and the six, it's the one, Two, six, the whole pattern there, indicated by the dots as the start and the end of the pattern. But if we follow the same approach, look, x equals 0.126. And in this case, you can probably see, look, if I times it by 10, that, that wouldn't work with these three recurring decimals. We'd get 1.261. If I times it by 100, like on the previous question, we'd get 12.612. Two, nothing lines up. So when it comes to three decimals, we're going to have to times by the next place value up from 100, which is a thousand. Okay, so no, hopefully nice and simple there. One recurring decimal you times by 10. Two recurring decimals we times by 100. With three, we're going to times by a thousand. So let's just times this by a thousand. So 1,000x equals 126.126 with those recurrings patterned again. So you can see that they line up. And again, it's quite a nice one. We take these away from each other. Look, there's not going to be any decimals involved. We get 1,000, take away the 1x above, which is 999x. And 126.126, take away the 0.126, just leaves us with 126. And there we go. Quite nice, because there's no decimals involved in this one. Now, if we turn that into a fraction, which we can do straight away, divide by 999, we get 126 over 999. Now, we can see in the question what it wants us to write it as, 14 over 111. Now, I think it's quite easy to see that the denominator there just needs to be divided by 9, but it's not so easy to see the numerator. But for the bottom, we can probably just go straight to 111 there. I think that's quite nice and easy to see. But the numerator there, dividing that by 9, I think we need to show some working out for that. I don't think it's quite as clear to see that 126 divided by 9 is 14. So what I would do for this is just to the side show some working out. So 9's into 126, 9 goes into 12 once with a remainder 3, and then it goes into 36 four times, and you can see there we get our 14, and then we can stick our 14 on the top. And I do think when it's not quite as clear to see there, it's really important that you show that working out, because we are proving that this decimal equals that fraction. So I think it's important to prove that you can actually do the working out behind it as well. Okay, so showing all your steps like that, and I think we should also leave it as x equals, we are proving algebraically, so we're going to say x equals 14 over 111. Okay, right, here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions there, very similar to the previous two. So have a go, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first question, we've got 0.18. Two recurring decimals, so we're going to times by 100. So we've got x equals 0.18. And then when we times that by 100, we get 18.18. There we go. And they nicely align. We're not going to get any decimals involved here. So we get 99x when we take the x's away equals 18. And if we turn that straight into a fraction, we get 18 over 99. And that simplifies quite nicely. The bottom, we are going to have to divide by 9 to get to 11. So divide by 9 gets us 11. And the top there is quite nice and easy for us to divide as well. 18 divided by 9 is 2. And there's our final answer. Nice one, that one. On to the next one. Prove algebraically that 0.216 can be written as 8 over 37. So we've got three recurring decimals. So 8 e x equals 0.216 times that by 1,000. So 1,000 x equals 216.216 with that recurring. And we can take those straight away without hopefully having to do any working out. We get 999 x equals 216. And we can turn that straight into a fraction, 216 over 999. There we go. Not as nice to simplify this one. So let's have a think about how we could do this. Now there's nothing that stands out as being really easy and obvious to actually divide by here. So you're going to have to really think about how you're going to simplify this. Now, 
I think the best way for us to go about doing this, and this is a little trick here, to get from 216 down to eight, we could actually just think, what do we divide by in that case? And we can do that by doing it the opposite way. So eight into 216, how many times does that go in? So eight goes into 21 twice with a remainder of five, and then eight goes into 56 seven times. So it's not very nice, but you figured out here that you're gonna to have to divide by 27. So dividing by 27 would give us eight on the top, and we're gonna to have to do the same on the bottom. There we go, so we'd have to divide that by 27. Now debatable here whether you actually have to show that you divide by 27 because we know that that's going to go down to 37 but we should actually show that working out. So it's not very nice but I'm going to have to do 27 into 999. Now 27 goes into 99 and you can feel free just to write a little list of 27 times tables. So 27, 54, what's the next one? 61 is 71, add 7 to 54 is 61. And then add 20, add 20, isn't it actually 81? There we go, so it's 81. There we go. And we're not going to need to go further than that because we're only going up to 99. So, on to the next part then. How many times does it go in? It goes in three times into 99. And there's a remainder of from 81 to 99 of, let's get this right, 18. Yep, from 18, let's have a look. So let's write that in 18, 100, so that's 189, not very nice. So 189, how many times does 27 go to 189? We're gonna to have to do a few more of our times tables here. So 81 plus 27 is 108. Add another 27, gets us 135. We're getting a bit closer. Add 27 again, gets us 162. And add 27 again, gets us to our 189. So it goes in seven times, and there we go, there's our 37 there. Probably could have figured that out, obviously, because we knew 37 ones on the bottom, but just a little strategy there that when it is quite tough, some uh, a different way that you can actually approach that to make sure you get there. Of course, I've jumped straight from 216 over 999 down to eight over 37, but you could have simplified it in steps to maybe dividing the top and bottom by three and then dividing it by three again uh, and sort of thinking about how you could get down to that final one. That's actually quite a tricky question there, but just something to be thinking about as to how you could actually approach one of these harder questions. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, so this question says, prove algebraically that 0.321 can be written as 53 over 165. So what we've got here is uh, very similar to those earlier questions where you've got a decimal that's not recurring at the start there, but then we've got a repeating pattern of twos and ones. So if I write this down, look, I've got x equals 0.321, and the two and the one are recurring. Now again, we have only got two recurring decimals, so when there's two recurring decimals, we times by 100. So when we multiply by 100, we get 32.1 and then it's just the twos and the ones that are occurring and then we go it lines up. Now when we take these away from each other, you've just got to be very careful, okay? And if I do the working out to the side, you'll see why. So if I do 32.121, I'm gonna take away 0.321. And again, it's the recurring above the two and the ones. Now, obviously the ones and the twos at the end there are gonna disappear, but we've got one take away three, okay? Because we've got naught, naught, and then we've got one take away three, which means I'm gonna to have to borrow for this question, and this, where this, is, well, this is where this steps up a little notch. So I'm gonna to have to borrow from the two, and I do 11 take away three there, which leaves me with eight. Now it's okay once you've done that, but you just gotta be careful that you don't accidentally do three take away one, and you actually do do the one take away the three, the bigger number take away the smaller number there. But now we've got one take away zero, which is one, and three at the end, so we get 31.8. So actually when we take these away from each other, we get 99x, just like before, but it equals 31.8, being very careful there with our carrying. Now we can carry on. Times both sides by 10 to remove that decimal. And that gives us 990x equals 318. There we go, and we can turn that straight into a fraction. So x equals 318 over 
990. There are actually other ways of doing this. You can actually do a thousand X and 10 X and take them away from each other. But I tend to find that it's just a lot of writing and a lot of uh, different steps rather than just sticking to this one process. So it's why I decided to do it the way that I do. It's just the way that I quite like to do these questions, but there are other ways. Um, but let's have a look. We've got to simplify this now. So I've got to get from, th well, let's have a look. If we could, I don't think there's a nice easy way for us to do our division here. I think it's dividing by six by the looks of it, but if you don't spot that, just take your time and simplify it. So let's just go with dividing by two. So let's divide everything by two. So on the top there, if we divide 318 by two, and you can do a bit of bus stop for these, that's 159, 159. And on the bottom there, 495. There you go, you can always do a bit of bus stop and just take this a bit slower than I'm going. But that's dividing it by two. And then the next step, we need to get to 165. Uh, it's quite hard to spot what these divide by. They actually divide by three, but you just have to take your time. Obviously, they're not even. You might just be able to see there that 53 times three is 159, so it must be dividing by three. And if we divide by three, 159 becomes 53, and 495 divided by three, I'm just gonna actually work that out. Let's have a look, 495 divided by three. Three goes into four once, remainder one goes into 19 six times with a range of one and into 15 five times. So there we go, we get 165. And there's our final answer. So if you do get these horrible bits at the end here, just take your time, you can do as much division as you need to to actually prove that it simplifies down to the fraction they're asking for. But any steps that you feel like you don't need to do the division for, that's absolutely fine, okay? But I don't think it would have been realistic for us to maybe um, just go from 318 down to 53 without showing how we've done our division there. We'd have to have shown that we div we're dividing by six using bus stop, and we could have done that as well. But here's one, here's a few for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, there's two recurring decimals. So we've got x equals 0 0.681, times in that by 100, we get 68. 0.181 and when we take those away from each other got to be careful on this one but we get 99x equals and let's have a think let's do the working out to the side so 68.181 and we're going to take away 0 0.681 so we're going to have to do some borrowing so let's have a think we've got zero there it's the one take away the six which we're going to have to borrow for so 11 take away 6 there is 5, and then 7 take away 0 is 7, and 6, so it's 67.5. There we go, so 67.5. Now we can need to just uh, times both sides by 10, so 990x equals 675, and turn that into a fraction, x equals 675 over 990. Now we just need to actually simplify that. So again, not the nicest to simplify. The top and bottom do both divide by five though, so we could do some bus stop for that. Is there a quick way that we can see how to get down to 22? You might be able to spot that obviously if you divide by, let's have a think. No, so I don't think there's anything nice and easy to spot there. So I think I'm gonna just divide by five to start with. There we go, so divide by five. Obviously, if you've got a calculator here, this is quite nice to simplify, but this is likely gonna be a non-calculator style question. So dividing them by five, we've got 675 divided by five, which is one, three, five. There we go, so 135 on the top. And 990 divided by five. So I think we're in that space. Five goes into nine once, remainder four. 49 up to 45, so that's nine remainder four. And then into 40 goes eight times, so it's 198. And there we go, so 198. Now they divide by three, not the easiest to spot there. Let's have a think. Do they divide by anything bigger? We wanna get from 15 down to 135. Now you might actually be able to do a bit of a quicker step here, but I'm just gonna take it in steps because most people are gonna to wanna to take it in little slow steps here. So we'll divide by five. Sorry, divide by three. So 135 divided by three. And again, you can show you working out for this. I'm just gonna take a bit of a quick approach so you can get the, I can get the answer for you. But 135 divided by three is 45. And then 198 divided by three is 66. And then we're almost there. The divide by three again, 
So actually we could have divided by, by a higher number there, but divide it by three again. There's a lot of working out here and we get 15 over 22. There we go. So 15 over 22, finishing that off. Quite a long question, a lot of simplifying, but eventually got down to that 15 over 22. Let's have a look at the next one. So for the next one, we've got x equals 0.543. Again, times that by 100. So 100x equals 54.343. And then take those away from each other. So we've got to borrow again. Let's have a look. So we have 54.343, and we're taking away 0.543. Right, so a bit of borrowing going on again. So we can do the fours and the threes, but we're gonna to have to borrow from this one. 13 take away five is eight. Three take away naught is three, and then five, so 53.8. So we have 99x equals 53.8 and then timesing both sides by 10 like we've done on all the previous ones we get 990x equals 538 turn that into a fraction 538 over 990 and this is a lot nice uh, a lot nicer than the last one to finish here because once we divide by 2 they're both even we get 269 on the top and 495 on the bottom there. Well, there we go, that was a lot nice, a lot nicer than the previous one. But 269 over 495. So these are quite tricky, these, these actual particular questions here when you've got such a lot of simplifying to do at the end. But just take it and take it, you know, take your time with it and just make sure you're careful with your bus stop divisions there, actually going through these parts of the simplifying. Let's have a look at something else to finish. Okay, so a slightly different question here. It says, prove algebraically that 0 0.1 and then recurring 3, 6 multiplied by 0 point recurring 2 is equal in value to 1 over 33. So you can't actually multiply these without a calculator unless you turn them into fractions first. But I would I say, have a go at this question, see how far you can get with it, because we're gonna go over the answer anyway, but pause the video there, have a go, see what you get, and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so for the answer for this. Now if I start with this first decimal on the left, 0 0.136, and I turn that into a fraction, we're gonna times it by 100. So x equals 0 0.136, times it by 100 for two recurring decimals, and we get 100x equals 13.6, and then 36. Oh, that's number six. 36, there we go. And if we take those away from each other, we get 99x equals 13 point and then 6 take away 1 is 5 times both sides by 10 we get 990x equals 135 and turning that into a fraction we get x equals 135 over 990 now we just need to simplify that so simplifying this let's see what we get we can divide top and bottom by 5 divide by 5 and on the top Let's have a look, we'll probably have to do some working out for this. Let's do some working out. So 135 divided by five. Five gives into 13 twice, 35 seven times. So we get 27. And on the bottom, 990 divided by five. Five goes into nine once, remainder four. Into 45, nine times, remainder four. And to 40, eight times, so 198. There we go, 198. And again, I think I believe this simplifies again. Let's have a look. So the top and bottom, what do they divide by? They definitely divide by three. A little trick that you can do is if you add up the digits of one, nine, and eight, that adds up to 18, which is in the three times table. And that just gives you a little hint it divides by three. So let's divide these by three. So 27 divided by three is nine. And 198 divided by three, we're probably gonna have to work that out. Let's actually just work that out. So 198 divided by three, Three goes into 19, up to 18, six times. And that goes into 18, six times, so 66. Oh wow, and then we can simplify it again. So they both divide by three again. So nine divided by three is three, and 66 divided by three is 22. Well, so we finally got down to the end there. So three over 22. So there's our first fraction. And that's what we're gonna multiply by 0 0.2 recurring. So 0 0.2 recurring, we just need to turn into a fraction. So x equals 0 0.2. It's only one recurring decimal there. So 10x 
equals 2.2. Take them away from each other. Then we get 9x equals 2. And x equals 2 over 9. There we go, and there's our second fraction there. Now these are the two fractions that we need to multiply together. So we have 3 over 22, and we're going to multiply that by 2 over 9. And you can either just times the tops and times the bottoms, or you can actually do a bit of cross-cancelling here. So I'm going to do a bit of cross-cancelling to save doing any more simplifying. So if I divide this, these two here by 3, that would be 1, and this will be 3. And then divide these on the other diagonal there by 2, that would become 11, and that would become 1. So 1 times 1 on the top is 1, and 3 times 11 on the bottom is 33. All right, there we go. And there's our answer, 1 over 33, with a lot of working out there and a lot of steps of simplifying. Okay, but just think about, obviously, what you can do, you know, simplifying your fractions and just being very, very careful with that as you go through them. But that is quite a lot on recurring decimals there. That is the end of the video. But while I'm sticking through all of that, if that was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.